Space is vast, dark, and not your friend. Gamma rays and neutrino bursts erupt from dying stars to cook you alive. Black holes tear you apart, and the void itself boils your blood and seizes your brain. Try to scream, and no one can hear you. Hold your breath, and you rupture your lungs. Space isn't as empty as you'd think, either. Its frontiers are ever-expanding. Rival governments wage a cold war of aggression while greedy corporations vie for valuable resources. Colonists reach for the stars and gamble with their lives. Each new world tamed is either feast or famine. And there are things lurking in the shadows of every asteroid. Things strange and different to deadly. Things alien. This is the Alien Role-Playing Game, a universe of body horror and corporate brinksmanship where synthetic people play God, while space truckers and marines serve as hosts to newborn ghoulish creatures. It's a harsh an unforgiving universe and you are nothing and not expendable stay alive if you can welcome to Vorpal Tales where we play terrifying tales and awesome adventures every day of the week most days twice a day if it's the dark and macabre that sets off your motion tractor on Sundays we're playing unknown armies our campaign burn later on that same day vampire the masquerade starlight and smoke on Mondays we're playing they came from beyond the grave and on Tuesdays we're playing our chronicle of darkness Insurgents, Mage of the Awakening 2E. On Fridays, we're playing our other Chronicle of Darkness, No Time for Reality, followed by Ravenloft. Uh, and on Saturdays, Simber Room, Heirs to Darkness, on the Free League Twitch channel, followed by uh, Werewolf the Apocalypse. If it's the adventurous and fantastic that you prefer to aim your escape pod at, on Tuesdays, we're playing Exalted Essence for one more session in support of the new Kickstarter on the Onyx Path Publishing Twitch. And on Wednesdays, Fallout, Radioactive Summers. Be sure to log into the corporate network and check out our website, forpletales.com, to see our complete calendar, get recaps of shows, and get the links to our past archives on YouTube. You'll also find social media links there and links to our Ko-Fi and Patreon to toss a coin to your bards. Be sure to click follow on Twitch so you can be notified of shows and interdepartmental memos. And if you check out the YouTube archives, subscribe and hit the bell to avoid being assigned to a backwater terraforming colony. Special thanks to Free League for being awesome and for all the support they offer. Thanks to Astral Tabletop and the Foundry for our being our virtual tabletops. And thanks to Coag, Somnium Music, and White Bad Audio for some of the sounds you'll hear in this campaign. We're using the shiny new Colonial Operations Manual from Free League. We encourage you to get a copy, too. It has tons of new character options, equipment, world building, a full campaign, and or a series of adventures. And, of course, like every Free League book, it is gorgeous. Links will appear in chat momentarily. This weekend, starting tomorrow, join us for Onyx PathCon 2021. Three days of panels and games. Catch us this year running live plays every day. Tomorrow we begin with our Contagion Chronicle No Time for Reality at 4. Then Pugmire squeaks in the deep at 7 and followed by They Came from Camp Murder Lake at 8 o'clock. Come watch me get stabbed. On Saturday, Trinity Continuum Assassins at 1. First time publicly played ever. Mage 20th Anniversary Edition Technocracy Reloaded at 2. Mage 20th Anniversary Edition Victorian Age at 6 with most of the people in this game. And then Scarred Lands. Frost Lands of Fenrillic at 8. With, uh, or you can catch John. And Scion, Hero Dragon Mythos at 9, where you can catch Dwayne. And I also missed the other Scarred Lands Day game, where you can also catch John earlier in the afternoon on Saturday. And then finally on Sunday, Deviant the Renegades at 11 a.m., then Mage, Rich Bastard's Guide to Magic at 5, and finally Vampire the Masquerade, Starlight and Smoke at 9. You can also catch Ever on Saturday playing Changeling the Lost, and me, Sunday at 11 a.m., playing They Came from Classified. Come check us out and join in on the fun. And remember, as always, this show is sponsored by the Wayland yutani Bioweapons Division. They provided a very generous contract payout boost for this mission when you work for the company your family. Wayland yutani building better worlds. Marines, get on the line, form up, and sound off like the ultimate badasses you are. Hi, uh, my name is J3 Billion, otherwise known as John, and uh, I will either be playing Ezekiel Thomas tonight, our uh, loudmouth cussing asshole, or uh, Benjamin Baker, the soft spoken sharpshooter. Hey everybody, I'm Ever, my pronouns are they, them, and tonight I shall either be playing Adam, the secret synth who is actually kind of nice, 
or chase the uh, my my self proclaimed asshole. Both of them are he him, and you can find me all over there as Changeling ever. And I am Dwayne, known as Made of Kimchi on the network. Uh, tonight I will be playing Sergeant Harrison, probably for the better part of the episode. I'm Rosie, and tonight I will be playing potentially both uh, the Marine Ruth while she kicks down doors and blows things up, and Dr. Laura Lamb while she stares at things and wonders about them. Hello, I am Kisama. You can find me on Twitter at TrueKisama, and tonight I'll be Lockwood captain of this vessel you know all that's well, going to change is I'm, oh, sorry. you go ahead all that's going to change is I'm going to be like Captain Lockwood <laughs> <laughs> yep. so well that you just made that a permanent thing so. alright and now I ran out of a clever thing this week hmm Rear Admiral ever, if you would, please read the recap from last week. Um. Yeah, you're the Admiral of the Rear. Excellent. Who's Rear? No. <laughs> okay. Yes. Let's see here. Yes. <laughs> USS Ossipon. It has been four days since the last mission. Yesterday, in a ceremony on the space station, we were awarded with merit and ranked up. A lot of people, most of whom we don't know and don't care about, a lot our actions during the mission. Our awards included increase one step for all characters, back pay for three months, naval crew gets distinguished service medal, and the marines get gallantry cross. With the death of the prior captain, command of the USS Ossipon was granted to now acting Captain Lockwood! We all spend our experience points and explain how they are acquired. Before this happens, Lockwood orders an autopsy on the prior captain. We learn that the captain had been killed seven days before everyone was revived from stasis, and whoever did the tampering with the pod was not tech-savvy. After the autopsy, the remains of the prior captain are to be put to rest via your standard airlock burial body parts everywhere. All of the bells and whistles are on display and all of the party attend, some even passing along words and eulogies. Our next mission, Phantasmagoria, in order to establish a forward operating base. Secondly, we are to create a safe space for Project Life Force and its scientists. Surveillance team consists of Chase, Ruth, Harrison, Gardner, and Baker. Captain Lockwood tries to take up a collection for a sentry turret. He's able to acquire two turrets, and Sergeant Harrison purchases a control head mount for Ruth. On day one of our planetary surveillance, we seem to not be able to find any good landing spots, but at least Chase keeps us in the air and we don't crash, unlike a previous pilot. The planet itself was brutal short, or has brutal short summers, brutal long winters. As we continue to Sector 2, the ambient temperature drops 20 degrees Celsius. The flight stick freezes and the VTOL hits the ground and takes significant damage but is still intact. Now grounded, Gardner successfully sets up a camp that will keep for two shifts and will then degrade. Harrison is able to secure the camp so that everyone is safe from the weather. Ruth then talks Gardner into fixing the VTOL during the night watch. She entices him with the chance to touch her sacred petunia. Thinking back on his memorable encounter with Zeke, Gardner is able to completely fix the VTOL. As night falls, to our own stupidity, we discover the camp was set up on ice, so the camp, VTOL, and all the crew go sliding downhill due to unstable tectonics. Gardner and Harrison go to tie down the VTOL, but Harrison pulls rank, threatens Gardner, then secures it himself. 
Day two begins with more surveillance. We find a perfect spot. There is so much flora, but at the last second, Harrison realizes there's a deadly pathogen that has killed all organisms, save the flora. As the day drags on, a severe blizzard rolls in, catching us off guard. This causes the VTOL to careen extremely off course, way up into the mountains. Once we get stabilized again, we pick up something on long-range sensors. Some that resemble large mineral deposits. We make three aerial sweeps of this ship, humongous in size. Sensors indicate organic life within the structure, approximately a meter and a half high. All of these entities are giving off heat like an egg. We will land and establish our forward operating base and call in the research team. Excellent. Okay. Thank you very much. First things first. Go ahead and mark down which character you're switching to for mission two. Because when we jump forward about a half a day to where your original scouting group returns to the ship, reports you're fine, and group two is sent to investigate the ship boots on the ground. What could go wrong? So, decide which character you want to take. Mark it so and zoom. This session will be entirely one character, so no jumping. Uh, do I want to play my jerk? Nah, I think I'll go with my synth. You can work together as players, not necessarily characters, to figure out the best team, and then uh, Key's captain can give the orders. Well, as we've seen, when we're on land, we definitely need a medic. <laughs> I think a medic is a good idea. We're building stuff, so... Zeke, probably. And I figure we're going to want uh, Dr. Lamb because of all the observation and science and stuff. Are we just setting up, or are we actually going into the ship? Oh, you're going in the ship. Yeah, company man would not, uh, yeah, he wouldn't put himself in the front, especially because he probably has some idea of what's going on. Maybe, possibly, secret encoding. So Harrison will go. <laughs> ah, but it's... It's all the company man's plan. Exactly. His plan, everyone else acts upon it, mm. he reaps benefits. Right. Okay. The company man's not going. The company man's part of the Navy. That's kind of weird, but it's okay captain's going to go with the ground crew here oversee things make sure nobody fucks up or because he wants to stay close to the medic that too if everybody else is bringing their naval person maybe i should just bring my naval person <laughs> i don't feel like the one guy out ah yeah or is it so you can assassinate me? Thinking I was going to be on the ship, but I'm not on the ship. Well, okay, let's... All right, so... So, Zeke's coming. Dr. Lamb's coming. Captain Lockwood is coming. Who is ever bringing? The one who drops the base, apparently. You're absolutely, totally, 100% human medic. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Completely uh, normal medic, the of medic, course. Yes. Like, okay. so human, it's 101%. So we have, yeah. So I will bring Harrison. 
since no one has weapons. I think that's an excellent idea. Yeah. I do have a weapon, but it's my shotgun. <laughs> you would also all be sent with standard sidearms, but yeah, not any real weapons, correct? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Plus, uh, if uh, Dr. Lamb does her job and you even raise a weapon, she can be the fuck you doing and slap it down and then probably slap you. Probably. Yeah. Okay. So no pilot rolls to land this time. You're welcome. <laughs> uh, Everest pilot brings you down and drops you off about a half a click away from the ship and says, I ain't getting any closer to that. And then heads back and then, and then parks and, and just is going to wait for your ass. So, Wait, is this where you're going to kill off both of my characters? You're half a click away. What's the worst that can happen to you? <laughs> uh, uh, Dr. Lamb shoulders her, um, I guess, equipment and grumbles about how rude and starts heading off. Hopefully in the direction of the ship. So, which character did you bring, Key? I brought the captain. Captain right. Lockwood. So you would actually be leading, and you would actually be armed with whatever you want to be armed with. And you would be, like, in the front of the marching order with the with the thumpy tracker and the navigation equipment, which, of course, is all the same thing. Yeah. Yes. Please describe what you're bringing. It's beginning with the captain. Lockwood is so confident that nothing could possibly go wrong that he's just going to bring his sidearm. Okay. So you have your sidearm and uh, standard issue uh, all-terrain clothing, I assume. You're not wearing your body armor. Might bring the helmet. But okay. other than that... You do all still have, even without your regular body armor, you do all still have armor of one, because remember, this is the arctic phase of the planet, so you are bundled up in uh, arctic expeditionary gear. So Lockwood, you're only concerned with the navigation equipment and your sidearm and nothing else. Okay, what about Sergeant Harrison? Uh, he will go full full tack uh, with uh, all the armor. He will bring his uh, pulse rifle, he'll bring his pups, his uh, long range visual equipment. Probably not the ghillie suit. Probably leave that, leave that one at home. Are you wearing full body armor? Oh yeah. Okay. I'm going to be moving slow because it's in the snow, but... So actually, no, I forgot. You're the tracker, so you're in the lead, not the captain. Oh, I, th I really thought you were going to stick the highest-ranking person up in front. <laughs> it was actually about the person most likely to not get you lost, and that's your character. Lockwood is not uh, Gorman, so you're okay there. <laughs> What about the doctor? What kind of equipment did you bring, knowing that there are heat signatures and possible alien life forms on board the crashed vessel? Assuming, though, that it is uh, local fauna, but still local fauna that is alien. Yeah. Uh, she has her uh, seeks and system diagnostic device and a motion tractor and that sidearm she was issued for this mission. You also have a sample collection kit both for uh, bringing complete samples up to five kilos and up to about the size of your torso. It's like a square rectangle. It's not a square. It's a rectangular shaped box you carry on your back. Uh, you have three. You can make two other people carry one for you also as part of the backpack. Yes. But then you also have like uh, injectors and needles and clamps to pull out samples, like small tissue samples or whatever. 
You could do a full biopsy if you needed to. And you have a variety of... Uh, it, the kit has a variety of chemicals and sensors for, you know, doing a field exam of something. So who are you going to force to carry the other two containers? Say that again? Uh, she I'm requisitioned... Trying to, Go ahead. trying to decide who I'm going to force to help me carry my supplies. She requisitioned three sample retrievers that will hold an entire alien egg if it needed to. So it's like a square rectangular backpack thing. She can mm -hmm. only have the one. Well, uh, let's go with Ezekiel. Okay. And uh, Ever, can you change your name in the chat to your current Hi. character? You're okay. Uh. <laughs> It's just there. Thank you. Uh, and Adam. Excellent. Uh, yeah. I I've assume you didn't bring any body armor, armor, Doctor? No. Yeah, why would you do that? That's heavy. It's heavy. I'm already carrying this thing. Yep. And uh, if something happens to them, I need to be able to carry out the other containers. Correct. Corporal, what well, do you bring? I will uh, carry your bag. Looks at it, grabs the strap, and just like as soon as, as soon as you take your eyes off him, he just starts dragging it on the ground. It's not Promise. long enough to drag on the ground. The straps aren't. You could carry Leave it loose that in your fucking box. Thomas, I swear to God. <laughs> Even better. What did what did what did you say? I, don't, I can't I can't hear very well. Must also, have cotton in my ears. Also, when you put it on your back, there's a little lever to pull, and it just immediately tightens to your torso specification, so it's not loose. Son of a bitch, this is fucking heavier than shit. God damn it. How much shit have you carried? A bunch of shit. My shit. All of the shit. Well, then you'll carry some more. It'll be fine. Come on. <laughs> it is about 20 pounds your empty. Shit. Because it's metal. All right, Corporal, what did you bring? Uh, my trusty rifle that uh, survived with me through that one time. You know. Your rifle or your shotgun? That thing, the shotgun. Okay. Sorry. Shotgun and a sidearm. Are you wearing body armor? Considering what happened the last time I was on the planet, yes. Okay. Any other supplies besides your med kit? Yeah, uh, what are those called? Um, they are... Mm, is it a stim pack? Is that what I'm thinking of? Or is it a uh, Those are the personal? things that give you boosts, yes. Okay, I'd like to take some of those for okay. the crew. The ship um, would requisition you enough for each player to get a stim pack to avoid fatigue, and probably two pain relief stim stimulators. Stimulators. Stim pack. Stimulizers is a word time. now. Stimulate. I'm gonna. Yeah. <laughs> yeah Stimulize um, all the one, things. One, two, three, four. Oh, I mean five. Um, it's totally five, exactly. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Uh, what was the second thing? The stimulizer, the pain, pain. <laughs> yeah. I'm two two healing it. hypos. Oh, healing hypo, okay. All they do is remove pain, but mechanically speaking, they're healing potions. Ah. Stim packs. Yep. And then, um, so what does my armor grant me? Same thing uh, it does normally, which is. What is it again, people? Two points of resistance or three? I forget. For what armor? Your regular marine body armor. I can't remember the stats. Uh, it should be six. 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 Six dice to roll to remove damage. Okay. Uh, in the sidearm, what is the damage slash range 
for that. Two, uh, two bonus dice, one damage, two range. Damn, my shotgun does better with the damage. Yeah, but it has way less range. True. Would that be a, a one range or a zero range? Shotgun is one. Two is three range bands. One is two range bands because zero counts in this game. Zero, okay. one, two, three. And the shotgun does less damage at one. It does most damage at zero. Do I always have enough ammo for my 12 gauge or should I requisition? Uh, have you actually even used it since we started? Yes, actually. Um, that first mission that I had played Adam. Uh, every weapon comes standard with, uh, fully loaded with two reloads. So for a shot, for a marine level shotgun, that's actually, uh, 24 shots. Because it's an automatic pump shotgun with eight shots before you have to reload. It's military grade. Ooh, that's a sexy shotgun. Yeah. <laughs> My opinion is, if you go through all 24, you're probably dead. Yeah. Oh, damn. Uh, rope. Or climbing gear, as it were. Okay. Just in case. Mark you that never down. know. Uh, that's what it looks like. I tossed you a picture in Discord. Man, I used to be really good with a shotgun, um, actually. More sci-fi than that, but that's the basic idea. Handheld lights. Shots keep for, for fun. Yes, you can requisition uh, a light, except you would actually attach it to something. Probably your primary weapon or your helmet. Helmet. Okay. That's actually in the equipment, but you don't need to write down. Yeah. Ballistic or If you're a Marine, you've already got the M10 ballistic helmet that comes with it. Okay. Um... Do we have bug repellent? <laughs> <laughs> you can, in fact, get a can of Raid. But does what it a, do what about, Makes you feel words? better. <laughs> but what about the heavy flamer? That is also good bug repellent. <laughs> and whether or not you can requisition that would depend on a roll if you don't automatically have one. Yeah, we so, don't even know what's in this thing. Yeah, if you don't have... If none of you have a flamer, you can try to requisition one, but I'll make you roll for that. I'd like to try to requisition one. Okay, so you can uh, roll your empathy plus two bonus dice for your rank. You need two successes. If you get one success, you can still do it for a favor. Oh, boy. Get the flamer. The heavy flamer. Uh, only one success. So do you want to owe the quartermaster a favor? Yeah, why not? I've seen some shit. Now, uh... Do you want to do it the proper way, or do you want to Ripley that shit up? It's been a very long time since I've seen that movie. So Ripley took the pulse rifle and basically duct taped the flamethrower to it. <laughs> and it was this double barreled monstrosity that kept trying to fall apart. It was kind of amazing. In other words, you get a slight pe you'll get a dice penalty to use it, but it's a two and one. If not, you can't carry both because it'll be flamer only. I'm gonna Ripley that shit. Okay. <laughs> Except, could I use plaster cast, like, that they give you for a broken arm to secure it instead of tape? Oops. Oh, I'll take a I look at you we get on the there. wrong Ripley. That's Ripley. There you go. That's it. <laughs> um, Badass. Hers also had a grade launcher duct tape to it. <laughs> <laughs> Ye old noob tube. Boom. Boom. So. That's the corporal, so that just leaves Ezekiel. What are you bringing? Wait, what? It's oh. so quick. It comes to me so quickly. Jesus. 
Um, some are some amount of like. Oh, he wouldn't. No, oh, he would definitely bring a little bit of armor. He would. Uh, he would. He would just get the basic set of armor, uh, a pistol. You're bringing your roughneck, right? Yeah. Empathy. Roughnecks don't get armor, but you can talk your way into it. All right. Well, let's see here. No bonus dice. Empathy. That's my strong suit as a roughneck who's an asshole. It's really my strong suit. Roll high. Nope. Okay, so they give you a suit, but they give you an old beat-up suit. It gives you three armor. Alright, I can deal with that. Three beat zero, correct. And it doesn't like, fit nah, right, fucking, whatever. It's got a hole in the goddamn elbow. What the fuck is going on? Still got blood on it. <laughs> he's gonna He's gonna definitely, like, I'm just gonna keep this and I'm gonna patch. I'll, I'll work on this. Don't you guys worry. We up and running in a jiff. Um, tch, 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 tch. he's gonna bring his cutting torch, his stash of hard liquor, obviously. Um, can he get a pistol? Oh yeah, anybody can get a sidearm for Planetfall. Okay, so he'll get just a standard pistol. I'll look that up here real quick, and then, um, is he able to get grenades? Fuck no. <laughs> okay. But you could talk one of the Marines into bringing them if you want. Uh, the They're going to probably ask you, grenade. why the hell are you bringing grenades? Why would you blow up the alien spaceship with all this technology? Uh, to save my ass. I don't like dying. Um, but you could actually roleplay that with the captain or the corporal or the sergeant. Uh... I think that's about it, other than his tools. Like, he's going to bring his, like, necessary items for his stuff. A little bit of armor. Okay. And a little bit of firepower. Yeah, and he'll go up to, uh... The captain and be like, Oh, uh, Captain Lockwood! Uh, I got a... Just a slight question here. Uh, we seem to be short explosives. Explosives? Yes, explosives. I think I need some explosives. You think you can help me out? Uh, sort of looks around, make sure no one's listening. All right, why do you need explosives? Uh, I mean, not, not, uh... Not, 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 like, high-grade explosives, just, like... I don't know, something to keep my ass from from being bug food. Last time I was down on the goddamn planet, they fucking swarmed us without any without any fucking warning, provocation. It was fucking bullshit. I was running around with a goddamn wrench. I didn't even have a fucking socket on the damn thing. I, that is a problem. All right. I was uh, I was contemplating throwing my goddamn wrench. I had to go fucking find the tools. I had to requisition half of them back. These damn things just ate him. That was a valiant thing you did on, on that planet. Yes, I totally... I, I did very valiant things on that planet. Very yes, valiant. you're correct. Not Absolutely. <laughs> I can't see to it that I can get you a medal. <laughs> and one grenade on one condition. Please try not to be wasted when you use it. I know you. I... I to be fair, to be fair, I do hold my liquor very well. I don't doubt that. I just don't want you to lose fingers. I will be more than sober-ish when I throw the grenade. Right, good man. <laughs> Pat him on the shoulder. Nod. And here comes the first benefit of being the one who's first to get shit on when things go wrong. Key. Unless it's science equipment... You can requisition anything you want for free in unlimited quantities unless the ship runs out. How many grenades do you want? It's uh, your armory. 
He's just going to need the one, hopefully. Just the one grenade, okay. Now here's the second question. Are you going to give him a frag grenade, or are you just going to give him like a flashbang and not tell him? He probably wouldn't know the difference. All right. All right, I have to approach this like a proper captain. All right. One is none, two is one, so two. And frag grenades to actually take care of any bugs. Okay. You have so two. one grenade. <laughs> that is more than zero. I'll take it. Thank you. It is more captain. than zero. Where do you put it? Do you stuff it in your pocket? No. <laughs> <laughs> Seems like a bad place for it. Um, there are places for it on your armor that doesn't fit right and it might fall off. Is he wearing the armor when he comes up to me? <laughs> I don't think I don't think we have we have ha, he hasn't dawned on his armor just yet. I don't think. Um, it's like this is just, it. He's gonna he's gonna be carrying it and like he'll just take it. It is obviously and, somebody was like, "You can have that set. You don't need any more." Yeah, it's like it's missing a leg plate. It's got bullet holes in the chest. He's he's gonna look at it, and, or he's gonna know that the armor is not not good for it. the The question is, is like the helmet looks like it's been burned. What? Hmm. You know what? He's gonna he's gonna keep it in his hand. No, that's stupid. That's stupid. He has a backpack, right? Yeah. He's just going to keep it in the side pocket of one of his backpacks with nothing else in it. Just There's a little slot, a little pocket on the side. You don't have a backpack because you're carrying that uh, sample holder. God damn it. <laughs> Put the grenade in the sample holder. <laughs> you could, but it takes a full turn to open it because it pneumatically seals. God damn it. Fine, I just, like, find the best place on the... Like, that's such a bad idea. Whatever. I'm gonna do it. Put it on my armor. It's such a horrible idea. So, yeah, he, he knows tries it to too. put on, he tries he knows to put on the chest piece in front of you, Captain. It's got pulse rifle holes clean through it. What the hell? Where did you get this armor? I, I requisitioned it. This is the one they gave to me. No, 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 no. Come come with me. No, we're getting you we're getting you something that'll actually keep you safe. Not have I, anybody die. I, I I thought so myself, but they were very prickly down there. Alright, so the captain gets you real armor, so now you have the full six dice. And the proper places to put the grenades. Okay, now they're not dangling in the fucking air. And he's gonna breathe like you can see him like he's clutching this grenade with white knuckles like he's just got the one and he's like bound and determined this thing is not gonna fall out of his hands so he's just like and then as soon as he does as soon as he has the chest plate on the arm he finds the spot for it and just like jams it in there and then takes a little bit of like tape and make sure that make sure that it can't come undone by just by like falling down Wow. Gotta okay. Use, gotta use. I've gotta use electrical tape. Duct tape doesn't work. Professionalism. Sand, sand gets in there. You you told you told me, Captain, to make sure this thing wouldn't go off accidentally. That's what I'm doing. Good work, soldier. Good work. <laughs> <laughs> he is really fucking weirded out by this by this grenade. He's not gonna lie. He knows he wants it because bugs. But he also respects it because he's not an idiot. That's amazing. All right. So you're now all standing around looking at each other. Half a click from the alien spaceship. You can see it from here right up until the lizard starts anyways. Of course there's a blizzard. Why wouldn't there be? Oh, he is a blizzard.
So you're all looking at each other until you actually move out, which would be when the captain gives the order, but the scene belongs to the group now. Like, the blizzard is just beginning to roll in, and you're like, fuck, and we have to walk. You turn to look at the captain, but the captain's like, or the pilot, but the pilot, who is every other character, is like, no, last time we went to blizzard, the wings froze, so you're hoofing it. Yeah, I, I can't, I mean, if you want to be able to get out of here... There is a four-wheeler yeah. on the uh, APC, on the dropship, but four-wheeler won't hold five. Why don't we just wait uh, back in the uh, shuttle until the blizzard is over, and then we go over? Somebody make a com check roll, com tech roll, to check the storm. That's the doctor's specialty here. Every second we stay on this planet is another second something's going to go wrong. Yeah, I have a two. So it's... Yeah, Captain, I find it very weird that you would just purchase those nice shiny turrets and you didn't bring them. Too bad. Turrets? No success. Somebody somebody purchased turrets? Yeah, you did. Purchased turrets? Yeah, but you didn't bring them. I don't know why. I didn't purchase no turrets. No, why no one uh, talk to me about turrets? I think it was private. What's the fuck his name? I told him to go stuff his log where it don't belong. Yes, that was in fact Key's other character who did that collection drive. He came up, he came up to me hey, asking Gardner for fucking money. Gardner did the collection, yeah. Yeah, well, the captain could have just said, I need turrets, and the base would have given them to him. He did that the hard way. <laughs> oh, why didn't anybody say anything during the recap? He did. He, he oh, didn't let I missed me. it. He, he, he wouldn't let me mount anything on him. Said the, the load was going to be too much. I had... So Fuck what you get turrets. for no successes, Doc, is the front has stalled. You can't figure out how long it's going to be, but it's going to be a while. This isn't going to blow over in a few hours. Right, so waiting here isn't as fine an option as I'd like. It's going to be a while before this blows over. What are your orders, Captain? Or is the science division making the calls on this one? The answer to that, Captain, is uh, you're in charge of everything except what? So you're in charge of everything except two things. The doctor can decide exactly when it's time to call the mission off and override you, even if you think it's too dangerous. And the doctor decides final disposition of anything that's found. You can't blow it up or break it or smash it unless the doctor says so, whatever it is. You're in charge of everything else. Let's move out. Come on. All right. Adam, why don't you throw me that uh, rope? Adam will dig through the climbing gear and toss you that rope. I'll uh, take a couple carabiners with it, lock everybody on since we're going to a blizzard. Tie everybody to a string. Uh, to quote an old, I think it was a 20th century movie uh, or book, was it? Um, there was a character named Samwise Gamgee who said, "Better to have rope and need, it, or better to better to." Hmm. Not that I don't like your anecdotes, but we gotta get moving. Oh, oh yes, my apologies. Better to have rope and not need it than not need it and have rope? Something like that. I don't know. So, something about the importance of rope, and it, it always was important. So, uh, I, I think they had a cult related to rope worship. Sergeant Harrison. Strange time, those 20th centuries. Please give me a uh, mobility plus agility roll, or I mean give me your mobility plus your agility so I can see that you roll it and see how good you are at knots. 
Come on, let me take my bonus off of here. Actually, wait. Do I have something for mobility? Yeah, don't actually roll it. Just give me total dice. Even, oh, even with uh, bonuses. Uh, I don't have any bonuses. Uh, it's six. Okay. You lash everyone together and move out. Whoever is going to assist with navigation, if anyone, can roll Comtech. Or I'm sorry, Survival plus Wits. And then uh, Sergeant Harrison, you can roll Survival plus Wits plus Bonus Die for whatever your long range equipment would give you for targeting. I have a but dice pool of five, so if anyone has better. Could uh, I, I assist by barking out orders? Yes. I'll uh, allow it. Yeah, anyone who wants to assist can assist. Just have to be one okay. Person. I have a dice pool Even of seven. Even if you don't have it trained? No, you have to have contact trained. Survival, sorry. Yeah. Okay, so my wits is for survival nothing. I can't roll. Correct. You just hang on to the rope. Okay. Two successes. Okay, plus one die for Rosie. Okay. And... That's one from me. Uh, Marking out orders. No bonus from Key. You have to get at least two successes to get a bonus die for this one. But no penalty from Key. He didn't fail. So, but it's, that's like his orders are like keep going that way. Keep Look out for the falling ice. Watch out for that cold stuff. Oh, I guess we forgot to uh, got to ask. Uh, what is our stress level currently? Nothing. Nothing. Okay, so we are clear on stress. Adam, you can do your assist roll. Of survival. Mm-hmm. Alrighty. Plus wits. Yeah. Here. Yeah. How oh, no witty way. of you. Two successes. Plus one die from Adam also. When it's gonna matter, I'm gonna fail. That's correct. <laughs> Roll it, Sarge. Okay. What am I rolling? Observation, right? No, survival. Or am I doing plus, survival? Survival okay. plus wits plus two bonus die from your assistance plus whatever your equipment gives you for long range stuff. Gotcha. Here we go. Ha <laughs> ha. Glorious. Successes. But nothing on the. No, no bad. No bad dice. You don't have any bad dice yet. So. You don't get lost. However, I am going to need. Uh, Ezekiel to make a straight wits roll because Ezekiel has no survival. Nothing. Okay. Uh, I'm going to push that. You can, but your character doesn't know anything's wrong. Oh, you're killing me. <laughs> I hate... I... Doesn't mean you can't push, you're still allowed to. But your character has no idea anything's wrong, this is reflexive. Alright. Alright, no, it stands. And, now roll observation. Plus this. Oh, that's the thing I'm good at too. Nothing. Okay. Does a negative? Does a one give me stress? No. Uh, stress gives you stress. No, don't worry. It was coming. You gotta I'm push the. You either you either have to put you either have to push a roll or I have to give it to you. So. Uh, then I'm gonna need the sergeant to make an observation check.
What, what <laughs> type of, of observation is this? <laughs> this is uh, deception based. Yeah. Okay. The rope snaps and Ezekiel falls down. I don't get any, I don't get any He falls down the mountain and it's just it. Well, you're not <laughs> on a mountain. You're not on a mountain, but you did not notice that the knot that Sarge failed to tie was yours, and the rope came loose 20 minutes ago. Uh, that's two successes. You notice 15 minutes later that you're missing Ezekiel because the rope came off and he just wandered off into the storm. He thought he was following you because of the shadows. He followed God. something. Why have we stopped? <laughs> we lost one somewhere. <laughs> you actually have helmet comms. You can talk normally. <laughs> God damn it. I, I would assume that the comms wouldn't work in this storm. Oh, no. They'll work fine until I don't want them to. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, that, but they'd probably sound kind of like... Yeah, correct. Constant blowback in them. Yeah, we, we, hello, hello, we lost somebody. Hello. Where are you at? We lost you. Now, Ezekiel, for you, yes. You can hear them talking, but it's completely broken up. He's trying to be like, oh, I like our I, 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 What comes across is I. I, I, I yeah. You, uh, Ezekiel's he, just uh, trying to say, What'd you say? I can't hear you. What? what, uh, what uh, 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 okay. Um, I can do this. I hope so. He is one of my collection containers. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> uh, I, I, I assume in that climbing gear you've got a piton or something, Adam? You do. Most likely. <laughs> uh, if God says so, then yes. I mean, if Mother says so, then yes. Mother is God. I will, mom. I will ask it's Adam for, for this piton and uh, jam it into the ground and tie us off so that we have some movement, but we're still all kind of centralized. And well, then, that'll uh, keep the rest of them together. But it's been 15 minutes since Ezekiel came loose. Yeah, I know. Uh, then I'll get into my pack. And I will pull out a... This would be like twice the size of a softball sphere. And then I lick it. And I throw it up in the air. Okay. It's one of my pups. You lick your pups, got it. Uh, yeah. I was gonna say he licks his Normally licks a pup ball. licks you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nope. Not in this world. <laughs> <laughs> in so, Cillian. So many dirty jokes. Pups. Slow time. <laughs> <laughs> Comtech plus wits from uh, the sergeant. Meanwhile, Ezekiel, you figure out you're not going the right way anymore. When you almost run face first and do a cliffside. And there's no one around you and you reach for the rope and it's not there. And you've got at least one shift while the Sarge tries to find you because he's making no progress so far. Yep. No um, successes on that. If it, he has one shift, so There seems to be some caves here, that's interesting. Maybe you could at least get out of the storm and sit your ass down while you wait for your rescuers. Well that sounds like a terrible idea. You can keep wandering through the blizzard. I'm good with that. Uh, I think he's going to, like, he'll sit next to the cave opening. He's not going to go inside. Um, you move over to the cave already, opening. He's already near, I'm assuming. You you move over to the cave opening. It's warm in there. Oh, that's it's like heat inviting. coming out. It is. Dangerous. You're in a blizzard. Um... It's also super damp, yeah. so you immediately assume hot spring. It's humid and warm in a cave. He's gonna he's gonna go think back to bug the bugs. The, bug, go, yeah, the bugs were, were not hot and warm, hot and damp. Oh, this is uh, you're killing me, man! <laughs> it's such a bad idea. Come on, this is how this is how people die. <laughs> Throw the grenade in there. See if see if that <laughs> works. Yeah, the one grenade. 
Um, Might work. I mean, if anything, like he'd throw the grenade in the snow and try and get your attention. Uh, uh, we'll have a better chance of finding you yeah. if you blow yourself up. Good thinking. So that way, if the grenade explodes in the if it. the grenade explodes in the heavy wind and sends snow flying into the blizzard, that that. that. Well, you know, if people are looking for it, we see something. No, he's not going to go in the cave. He's going to wait outside the opening, try and get a little warm. He's just going to rub his shoulders and just kind of shiver in there. And one um, stress die. Sure, he's going to light his cutting torch and try and like signal it's frozen oh wonderful sorry second roll for the second shift uh contact again yep you're uh, using me, a pup uh, yeah but I don't think it actually uses that or I think it, I get a bonus I'm gonna double check real quick I'm making you do com check tech to figure out how to keep it operating in the blizzard not to actually use its bonus so right now you've yeah, thrown it up in the air and it fell right back down and you're like shit and you sit down and tinker with it for ten minutes. Okay. <laughs> Sergeant, uh, are you licking equipment? Uh, yes, yes I am. Continuously and continuously failing at it. Do you do you lick it the second time? No, I already licked it once. It should have worked. Okay, good. Because if you licked it the second time, I'd have froze your tongue to it in a blizzard. So <laughs> <laughs> it's metal. <laughs> All right, so Ezekiel, I'm gonna need you to make a uh, stamina check. All right. Um, you think with a what well, is that strength and stam? Yep. Better fucking get something with this. Uh, two. And two successes. Uh, you're not freezing to death yet, but you can sense the impending signs of frostbite if you keep sitting outside this cave much longer. Ah, damn it. It's just me that's getting the frostbite? Yeah, because they actually were able to work together to get a little uh, arc light fire going where they're at. All right, I gotta go in the fucking cave, I guess. It's <laughs> a terrible idea. It's a fucking terrible idea. I mean, you can get frostbite. I'll allow it. It's up to you. Not gonna be any good on the mission. I mean, he's gonna step into the mouth of the cave. You immediately feel better. Go ahead and make but an I'm observation not, check. Plus wits. Not going anywhere near. Trying to go inside this. Alright, four and a stress die. Uh, one success. One success! You don't immediately see a hot spring, but you assume there is one because the condensation is literally dripping off the ceiling and walls. Uh, there's this weird stuff all over the wall and ceiling, though. It's like rubbery and sticky at the same time. It might be what's trapping the heat. Yeah. Great guano. Yeah, no, it's 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 moss. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it could be. You don't know anything about moss. moss. <laughs> yeah, I'm not the scientist. <laughs> no fucking idea. Nope, the scientist is warming with the rest of the group. Okay, Sarge, make your circle. <laughs> There's so much fucking bullshit. I didn't even tie the goddamn knot. The fuck is going on? <laughs> no success. Would someone like to help the sergeant with his robot? It's been 40 minutes. Yes, yes. Uh, I, if I can. What's the role? Contact. Sergeant, we can only talk about oranges for so long. Contact plus wits. <laughs> oh, one success. The doctor, roleplay this. You, you walk over and what do you do? Um, What precisely are you trying to do with your ball I turn it on I throw it in the air it goes and finds things that I want like a drill yeah 
but they're autonomous, so they just I can control them from this little computer I got here, or they can just do their own thing. Well, it's 40 minutes. My toes are getting cold. We really should try something else, or maybe let someone else look at it. Can I look at it? If you want to look at my balls, it's cool. <laughs> just the one. Okay, one. Um, the exhaust keep port. Playing with the other one. The exhaust port that it uses to hover for the uh, repulsor is frozen over. This bit is frozen. The Zico back in the cave. I can't even feel my own goddamn balls. He's actually playing you're pretty with comfortable his. right now. It's getting a little hot, actually. Like you can take your helmet off and shit if you wanted to. Trying to. <laughs> if we thaw this start- bit out, it'll be fine. So, you get it working, and it does take a few minutes, but it does locate uh, his very rapidly fading heat signature, heading towards the cave and then disappearing into some kind of cave. It does that whole shoot the light beam at it to record the cave, and it sends you back an image of the side of the cliff, Mm -hmm. the inside of the cave going in a couple hundred yards, and then, like, uh, Ezekiel just standing there, leaning up against the wall. I will relate it back to everyone, uh, his location, and then unpeat on us from the ground and start moving that way. Time jump. Grab your balls. Make sure you don't lose them. His balls follow him. Yeah, if the pup found him, then it should stay there and continue to ping its location. Yes, until you give it further orders. Yeah. So, you head, uh, to the cave. And you find Ezekiel sitting inside the cave. And the scene is yours again. Can I just... It's too fucking cold. Jesus Christ. I got now remember, you're not you cold. You're very comfortable. Cold outside. It's too fu- outside. Outside is too fucking cold. Get in here. A little bit. Don't, don't go too far in. I don't trust it. It's fucking weird. Doc. Which uh, one? <laughs> give me your best. Give me your best science roll. This is for uh, uh, Doctor Liam. Science, that, me- science you... meaning you could do comtech, you could do medicine, or you could do observation. Observation is a four, so I would love to do observation and wits. Do it. Sorry, I need to retrieve another <laughs> dice. And I'd separated out all of my other D6s. I'm like, there's no way I'll need another one. Get an extra two. Um, can I use analysis? Yes. On page 77. It absolutely applies to this. Let me find it. Make sure I use it properly. Two successes, which for every uh, six you roll, you get to ask the GM one of the questions below. I'm going to give you one for free, and then you can ask more based on your uh, successes. uh, Well, your second success. So whatever it is that's making this place hot and humid is a biological secretion. What's question two? Um, the second question is closest to what I want to ask. Uh, the question in the book is, is it dead or alive? The question I want to ask you said it was a biological secretion do you mean like from a plant or an animal fauna fauna please i'm out (laughs) (laughs) 
Doctor hasn't told anyone this yet. You guys uh, are no, all I just like... No, I was talking about me. Oh, ever. okay. <laughs> I was going to say, Adam would be busy arguing with Zeke while the Doctor's poking the wall going, that's weird. Oh, oh yeah, Adam would definitely be checking Zeke to make sure he hasn't gotten frostbite or poisoning even from whatever the secretion is. Yeah, and the Doctor wants to take out her do- diagnostic device to run a more thorough check. Okay, this time ComTech. Plus Zeke switch. Is gonna point. Plus analysis. Go he's, ahead, gonna point at his, he's gonna point at his toad and you go, you see that one? I almost fucking lost it waiting out there for you. I came in here because it was too fucking cold. I swear to God though, like I don't I don't fucking trust it. I don't trust it. I say we get the do you you got the flamer. Fucking burn this shit. Or let's just fucking leave. One of the two. Uh, uh this it's just a secretion. We should be fine. D- no d- d- fine. You don't... know what? That's what we said last time. I, I want to just check something with the GM. Uh, I don't think analysis actually gives me extra dice. Yeah, it gives you questions. Okay, good. Wanted to double check. One success. Okay. Well, what's your question? Also, Adam, you wouldn't even know it's a secretion. You still probably think it's a weird loss or some shit. Oh, okay. So Ezekiel's, well, over, uh... Ezekiel's over here saying, let's burn rock. Uh, what problems could it cause? I don't fucking trust it. Uh, you have no right. idea what kind of bacteria is on it because it's a secretion for one thing, and for a second thing, whatever made it might be around. <laughs> Most things on Earth that secrete chitinous material are not are not kind to humans. Um. Not necessarily hostile, though, just, like, dangerous. We should not stay here too long, I think. Uh, This uh, secretion is biological, organic, uh, probably from some kind of fauna. There's probably some kind of uh, alien bacteria, alien to us, native to the planet. And... um, Generally, the sorts of things that make this are are very angry, right? Grumpy? Mm, yes. Not no? angry. Uh, I would um, just not like to meet one. Okay, so so prickly then. They have an attitude. Don't like us. Yeah, as soon as you say bacteria, Harrison will just go. Is it is it airborne? Can we get it? Um, as Could. far as I'm aware, no. That was to Doctor Lamb, not the party. Tell them whatever you want, but the answer is maybe. <laughs> I mean, I mean, telling them no is probably the better option, though. Yeah, no, just don't touch it or lick it or eat it. I mean, why don't we just figure out this rope situation? And get the fuck on, move the fuck on. All right. Well, you're the I one mean, that untied it and got loose. I didn't fucking untie it. Well then, tie it up. You're trying to draw. Oh my, oh my lord! And fucking nothing. Just tied the rope. Came and fucking tied me. My goddamn problem. Captain Jordan Lockwood would go over and help Ezekiel tie the rope. <laughs> Make <feel> sure. One hundred percent certain that it is tied. Now, Doctor Lamb, you're not necessarily a fan of hanging out in a strange cave with chitinous secretions, but. You would definitely get a sample and be fascinated by it, because whatever made this, this is a fascinatingly extraordinarily secretion. Fascinatingly extraordinary secretion. Its density and thickness is that of steel, but it gives, like, rubber. Fascinating. Can I take a sample? Absolutely. You have a laser cutter. And your equipment also tells you it's old as fuck, and it's still this good quality. As in, hmm. it's been here for a couple centuries. Wow. Lovely. Impressive. Well, as she's looking at it, she's going, the good thing is this this particular portion is uh, old. So whatever creature made it might not live in this cave anymore. Or it could have made it a while ago and decided this is fine and just not touch it up again. Or it could be just coming back and be a thousand years old. I'd rather not stick around to find out. I don't want to be caught on its what? What would you call like the front of someone's home? What do you? Ah, never mind. Just get out of here. 
And with that, you make your way back out into the blizzard and successfully arrive at the crashed alien vessel. Now you all have plus one stress getting this close to an alien vessel of this size and scope. is freaky. Everyone except that. Well, would you look at that. Yeah. Like I said when I showed you the picture last week, and you've all seen the movies, it is massively larger than humans would need. Now, have you we, could say have it's we navigated a... You might say the cave was Squamous. <laughs> uh, I should have screenshotted it in its face. Yes, Sergeant, you were saying. Uh, <laughs> yes, before my soul was drained. Um, so uh, as we navigated forward, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming that based on our long range scans that we had done prior, that we're navigating to some type of opening or the best place that we know there might be a door and or hole. Yeah, it's got damage holes, but you were the uh, orbital scan was in it and the scan from the dropship was unable to pick up like a door, but it's got holes from where it hit the ground and it fell apart a very, very long time ago. Okay. Dr. Lamb, make your next comm check test. My teammate had escaped. That one went flying. Uh-huh. Mm. One success and a one on my single stress die. Excellent. Luckily, well, you could roll a seven. Roll it. Oh, sorry. I need I need a D10, don't I? D6. No, it's D6 plus one. Oh, four. You're good. The ship itself, at least the metals it's made out of, are uh, 8,000 years old. She's not going to tell them that. Okay. Plus one stress for you. Well, let's not waste any time. Gotta get in there. This is an impressive bit of space junk, isn't it? Just a display junk. of ego. Junk. This is the whole junkyard. I assume you send your pup in, Sergeant? Yes. Oh, I was fair. gonna, was I was gonna wait for everyone to finish. Yes, I will send my pup in. Uh, send it on an auto... However, it auto auto navigate mapping corridors. So you know how it's sort of kind of like a horseshoe, but it's like uneven. Right. The left, if you're looking at dead on side of the horseshoe, which you suspect might actually be the top if it was in space. It's like a C flying through space. Hmm. Uh, is some kind of massive room that seems to be full of. What might have been a weird kind of technology control room of some kind. In the very opposite bottom end of the sea, also, it's a massive open area full of stuff. You can't tell from the pub, it's just showing you the shape. It's got a variety of smaller rooms all over through the ship, hundreds of them. And then uh, one very large chamber that, you know, if it was your ship, you'd probably make this the cargo storage. It's massive. It's the size of several warehouses. And that's where the heat signatures are coming from. Like, uh, but there well, are very faint traces of heat in some of the other rooms. Especially that very bottom slash left the west side room from your perspective. Okay. Captain, we've got you know these three main chambers, which we should check out if we are going to make any checks. I'll let them know about the heat signatures. Uh, I'll probably relay that the ones in the cargo bay were probably the ones that we got off our initial scans from our 
or fly over. And then the pup makes it through to the last room while you and the captain are looking at it. And you stop mid-sentence. And the captain, if he was going to say anything, doesn't even say it. Because in that final room, and your 3D scan is what looks like a humanoid body if it was three times as big as you, like a giant, face down. Hmm. Two arms, two legs. It's in some kind of suit. Can't tell from the pup. While they're doing this, Ezekiel's just going to be trying to talk to Adam and asking... Uh, the doctor, hey, what are, what are the chances uh, I can start dismantling this thing? Can it get a little bit of parts out of here? You know, take some of the metal back, get some of the equipment. Mm. Comptech is actually pretty valuable. I'd, I'd slow down if I were you. Well, well, Dr. Laura Lamb may wish that things are preserved for now. Yes, I, I would like us to examine the structure as a whole before we start breaking it into pieces. And that's when you glance over at the 3D thing because you're talking about the structure, Doc. And you make a slight gasp, and you, so that makes Adam and Zeke look. Plus one stress for everyone, because that's clearly an alien life form. Fascinating. It seems so large. The Doctor is very excited now. About well, three times as big as me, it seems like. Two, yeah. Yeah. If you're a meter and a half... Or, you know, a meter and two-thirds. This thing is probably eight meters tall. Jesus Christ. Is there anything from the scan that remotely looks like a weapon in that room? Like no. anything that remotely Nothing that looks, looks like, like a, like a weapon gun? to you. Yeah. Okay. Pup, oh, oh pup great. scans aren't very <laughs> detailed. They're, like... They give you walls, floors, ceilings, and large things that are in the way. Yeah, I'd How only pick this thing there? up because with the <laughs> helmet, it's like 18 feet. <laughs> How do they think he's dead? Or is he still alive? I'm going to guess by appearances. It is likely dead. I wonder what killed it. Was it starving or... I said 8 meters. I meant 6 meters. It's not 8 meters. <laughs> it is not well, 30 feet tall. It's 6 meters. Uh, <laughs> I will need to examine it regardless. I thought it was the statue you were talking about. <laughs> No, in their suits, they're actually a couple feet taller than the actual engineers, out of character. Well, well, Doctor, is that where we're headed to first? I hope we find some interesting things along the way. Uh, can your 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 dog uh, keep sniffing ahead of us as we go? It's actually yeah, returned it, to him because it's completely done the whole ship now. Was that the only thing of interest that it found? No, it, you all know it also found two control yeah. rooms and a variety of smaller chambers with who knows what in them, and then a mass, and then the massive cargo bay with the heat signatures. Yep. I mean, it would be kind of cool if we did find some of the weapons. They got to be what ratioed for his size, right? So they put them. Literally, might might be a, a mounted cannon. Or we could auto fit them to a mounted cannon. That would be something. I'm going to go out on the limb here and say that if he did have weapons on him, and if the reason he's dead is on this ship, because we have seen life forms on the scans, they'd probably be of no use to us. Well, then I perhaps the we should. The rooms were in jars. Are they not the jars? The pup doesn't show you jars or not jars. Oh, I would like to. He starts to... fumbling with his pistol. Sorry. You're good. No. Uh, I would like us to begin with those heat signatures. Yes, heat signatures, and he starts thumbing his grenade. <laughs> <laughs> So the cargo bay it is then. Yeah. Uh, my thought process being whatever's generating heat is probably vastly interesting. And if it is dangerous, we should deal with it so we can explore safely. Doctor, permission to shoot first and then ask questions later. <laughs> <sighs> Only 
only rather... if there's only if there's two of them or more, because I want one. I didn't know you were interested in pets, Doctor Lorelaine. Based on the size of these things, you're not sticking one in one of them boxes. The heat signatures or the dead guy? The heat the signature guy. should fit in the pack. <laughs> yes, but not the dead guy, correct. Get dead thing. You don't know that it's a guy. Is that satisfactory, Captain? Ah, uh, satisfactory, I suppose. Uh, why don't we agree that if it looks like um, one of the lives of our crew is in danger, then that crew should take priority, I suppose. That's more like it. I suppose. I suppose. You make your she way... does not look happy about it. <laughs> you make your way <laughs> to a hole in the side of the ship or relatively near the cargo bay. The round arcing hallway leading there, corridor is definitely sized for things very much taller than you and wider. Like, four of you could stand uh, side to side and still make your way down the hallway and the ceiling, you know. Um, there's not a lot of stuff in the corridor itself, but it's clear damage, damage has been done here. Uh, it is very... It's like... Not like your spaceships where it's just functional. It's ornate. Like at one time, there were probably the carvings were probably intricately showing things, but they've chipped and fallen off, and frozen, and been faded out by time. But yeah, it's like a carved mono, uh, mos monolith more than it is a functional spaceship. And the arcs that hold the uh, the corridor up actually remind you of ribs. <laughs> I mean, the whole thing seems to actually be intact for the most part. I wonder what happened. But it looks like it crashed. Well, Does that's it? exactly what I'm asking. I mean, we can't really see much because of all the snow. The ship looks intact. Perhaps it landed. Landed with no survivors. I mean, something obviously happened. I mean, they couldn't get off. Someone murdered them. I'm starved to death. Dehydrate. Well, dehydration is a little, a, a little far-fetched with all the snow. But you know, you, you get what I'm saying. There's a lot of shit that could have happened. A lot of you guys are using terms that are very confusing to me. You keep talking about aliens, and we haven't even seen anything yet. Uh, I mean, I'm just a little gun... I'll be honest, I'm gun-shy after the fucking bugs. Goddamn right. thing just came up, whacked me right in the knee, and just fucked right off. <laughs> I'm still been, angry about it. There have been two events in my... service... stint as... Someone might call it. Uh, once before I joined this crew. And it's Was why it I carry my. Uh, y yes. How did once you know? a long time ago. Before you joined this crew. I don't think now is the time for stories. Just keep an eye peeled. Ah, yes. You're right. In the time um, it Oh, go ahead, Doctor. No, go on. In the time it takes for them to have this debate, you make your way far enough through the corridors to get to what is the cargo bay. And it does look very much like, you know, Star Wars blast doors, except forced open. One of them's, like, partially opened and tilted at the wrong angle. The other one's all the way retracted. Super massive square rectangular entryway. 
into what very much looks like a cargo bay because it has a walkway around it and then ste steps down in several places to a big area in the middle with raised platforms where you can connect things probably. Can I take a look at the door? Yes. It's probably not what's got your attention. What's probably got your attention is scattered all throughout the cargo bay in random places are big, round, leathery, egg-looking things. Oh, okay. Ezekiel's going to stand on the... You're right. Ezekiel's going to stand on the outside of the door and look at the door. <laughs> and there is a haze of what looks like fog up to the top level of whatever those things are. Like it's a little mini atmosphere. Uh, is, is that body in here? Nope. That is way off at a complete opposite end of the ship. Oh, darn. That's what Adam's interested in most. Of the leathery things, they have like enclosures at the top, but it looks like they could open, and it, several of them are open. Doctor, analysis. Yes. You think let's, those things? Let's do some observation. And can I command, as per like the actual command? It in the book to give some bonus dice. Sure, try it. All right, that is two sixes and a panic roll. Yeah. So two extra dice to the doc, and I got a three. So I'm two good. successes. As you're scanning them, uh, they're very hard. It's it's still leathery, but it's a very thick leathery outside, and then. Well, a good one or two inches of thickness of the finger quote shell till you get to the inside, which is membranous and fleshy. It even has like the pink tone of human flesh. Uh, but then you go to scan one of the closed ones, and something inside moves. And oh, you all gain plus one kicking. stress. You all gain plus Maybe one stress, and that seems like a great time for a 10 minute break. Yes, right that gives me a, a dice of stress, just even the player. <laughs> <laughs> and don't go anywhere, audience. We'll be back in ten minutes. If we don't Bye. die.
And we've returned in time for Dr. Lamb to see something move inside the egg sac, and everyone else notices too. 
This scene is yours. Huh. So, fire now or fire later? That's what I'm getting from this egg sack. Hold your fire. I mean, I don't... I'm not the one with the fire. Adam has the fire. Adam, hold your fire. I would very uh, much... I, I have been. Cool. Yes. Great. For, Thank you. for how long are we going to hold the fire? Until it starts to move outside of it. I uh, case would it. very much like to study one of these. It would probably be safer for me to do it in a contained area, like my lab. Not, not aboard the ship, right? We don't. That sounds. That's where my lab is. That's, uh, How many successes that did sounds... you get on your uh, contact roll? Uh, I had two, I think. It was one or two. So you can give me. We'll go with two questions from your talent. How old is it? This particular one? Uh, five centuries. About the same age as the chitin, actually. It's 500 years old. I mean, okay, that being said, let's put this in perspective just a tad bit. These whoever they are, had a working spaceship. And according to that door, shit in here did not go well. And now they don't have a working spaceship. You mean according to the door? Well, I mean, I look at the fucking door, one of them's off kilter, the other one went, like, slides right, and one of them looks like it's jammed the fuck up. Like, it doesn't look like that opened correctly or regularly. Well, we did establish that they crashed, right? Now, uh, Dr. Lamb, while they're having this conversation, because you didn't tell them the age of the did. ship, 8,000-year-old ship, 5,000-year-old egg, you can make whatever conclusion you want, but the evidence you have so far implies that something else from the planet made a nest here. Why would you think this is from the ship when there's such radically different ages? All right. Unless they used their spaceship for 7,500 years before it crashed. So the egg is 5,000 years old. 500. 500? The ship... Uh, Way no. younger. The ship is 500 years old. I mean, the... Sorry. Make up your mind, Doctor. <laughs> <laughs> the egg is 500 years old. The ship is 8,000 years old. Or the materials made that make it up are anyway. The the egg is significantly younger. What's your so, point, Doctor? Uh, well, there's a discrepancy, but I would like to examine that uh, large corpse. What's your second Maybe question? Figure out how old that is. Comtech rule. But would you like me to secure this room while you go to the other room? Oh, no, you don't have to roll it again. What was your second question from your talent for your initial? Oh, I'm so sorry. Harrison, secure the perimeter. Make sure nothing's lingering. I will do that with my one person. I will hold my fire. I would like to roll for the command. Thank you, Adam. That's much bonus appreciated. Dice. Adam is just holding the fire flamer thingy um, literally holding fire what problems could it cause uh, you have no idea what kind of pathogens or bacteria or whatever that it could expose you to you also don't know if it's poisonous like a snake uh, you do know though if you approach it incorrectly like it'll sense your heat and react to it there's something on the top that does that your skin tell you so you don't loom over it maybe figure out a clever way to put it in the container yeah uh, once she realizes that she's going to take a step back and say well we shouldn't snuggle up with them I think if we do that they'll hatch and we don't know what's in them oh like a, a mother hen sitting on its yeah. nest I wonder if it would imprint upon you 
Possibly. Um, uh, but don't. possibly in a way I would not appreciate. We don't uh. know what these are. No, we don't. Uh, but it's I... terrifying. I do agree that securing the room is wise until we can decide how to safely uh, transport one. So, All right, Harrison, you spend a shift. Adam, secure uh, the room. Yeah, Harrison, it takes you a shift to secure the room. You don't need to roll for this key. So you don't have to worry about command. One shift means you all lose one point of stress. In addition, you're able to count. There are uh, hey, um, 253 empty eggs. And there are uh, approximately 31, looks like, still intact ones. So of those 31, though, 20 or so look like they're completely frozen. Like, the weather ruined them. So, question... Okay. Maybe 13 uh, viable samples. Does anyone in the party have banter? Yes. Uh, uh, what? Oh, because I if, do. We are, if we are in a relatively safe space and we take a shift... It's not a safe space, though. You just <laughs> lose you lose stress if I say you do on a ship no matter what, but you are far from safe. You have to, so the wording is you have to feel safe. You don't feel safe. This is not a safe situation. All right. You don't find any other anything other, other any other things that are weird though. When you're securing the perimeter, as it were. And it does look like their technology is bioorganic. You don't have the first idea how to mess with it yet. Well, if I may suggest, I would li- I would love to take a look at what might have been our host at some point and uh, see if we can find any records of what they might have found of these uh, eggs. So we're not going to secure one now. No, not until we can determine what the inhabitants of the ship might have known about them in case they came with the ship as opposed to from the planet. Okay. Captain, who do you want to stay behind? All right, so very first thing. uh, Captain Lockwood would like to pat Adam on the shoulder to see if they give off any heat. See if Adam gives off heat? Hmm. Yes, Adam gives off heat. Yeah. Adam gives off heat? Okay. Just give him a, like, a firm pat on the shoulder. Like, Alright, good work. Uh, what, what was that for, Captain? Remember, you so actually whatever. have you have you have full access to Adam's specs if you want them as the captain. You just be like, "How does this thing work?" And I would tell you. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, I'm thinking if we could somehow turn off Adam's heat for a little while, he could go over to one of the live specimens and remove them without it detecting heat. You would out Adam like that? Damn. No, I'd be like, all right, Adam, you stay behind. Make sure nothing happens. Probably like tell you over the comms, like, all right, very, listen very carefully. Like a one to one while everyone else is marching forward. Not yes. gonna be like out in the open, open up your side cavity and start rearranging things. That's that's not cool. Um, excuse me, those are my innards, sir. <laughs> sir, those are my innards, sir. Those are my innards. They're on uh, the outers. You are able to to for a certain amount of time not release heat, but if you wait too long without releasing heat, you'll overheat and shut down. Essentially your body heat 
is made to replicate humans, but it actually has a mechanical function too. It's your coolant system. So you can you could do it, but not for more than a couple hours. And then after you do it, you're gonna radiate more heat than normal. Well, Dr. Lim, I seem to have a fever. <laughs> um, they probably wouldn't notice in a blizzard. You'd notice like on a ship, but not out here. So do you want to do that, Adam? I'll give but the orders for everyone else to scout ahead so they don't see your little secret. If the captain requested it, absolutely. Okay, then. You are now just another part of the ship. Nah. Hey, off to go see the giant dead man, shall we? Why do you Aww. guys keep saying dead person? Where do you see this dead person? Poor Adam. He was very uh, excited about humanoid. the body. Excuse me. Oh. <laughs> okay. You traverse the length of the ship. Body. Ignoring any other side category. Side rooms or uh, corridors because you're heading straight to the room where the pup showed you the humanoid. So yes, you get there and this room is uh, the ceiling is the same size as the cargo bay but it's actually smaller overall but still massive to you. Uh, there's a massive round ring-like table slash control panel and then the floor in the middle of it's patterned or textured differently than the room around it. Maybe the floor is part of the sh like controls. You don't know. I don't even know what this room is for. <clears throat> and then uh, the walls are different in here too. Almost like well, the walls have a function in this room. And the dead humanoid is sprawled on the floor facing towards the door, but about uh, 10 meters away from the door. It is definitely wearing some kind of suit. Uh, it is humanoid, uh, though. How do we know that it's humanoid? Yeah. I mean, it has two arms, two arms, two legs, two legs a torso, head. and a head. It, That's not human. It's like... Doctor, I know your specialty might not be human anatomy, but this seems very humanoid to me. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, it has limbs in the right place, and it has a, a head. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know, Sergeant. Seems pretty humanoid to us. Pretty big. Uh, the doctor is going to approach the console. Okay. Because that's what always happens. Wait, that is correct. Where'd Adams go? Adams holding up the rear. Oh, I gotta oh. go back and get him. No, no. You stay here. You, you you really left Adams to secure an area with a flame unit? That's an awful him. idea. What if they use the flame unit and wake them all up? I, I was actually going to suggest that, that maybe we go outside, get some snow, pack them around the eggs but we can do that after we finish here. After we're done here. Through the boss. And Adam will be Also, fine. technically, Adam's a Marine. You wouldn't have any reason to think Adam's just going to get flamethrower happy. <laughs> mm. You would assume that Adam will obey orders. I didn't know he had orders. I figured he's just dicking around in the cargo area with a flamethrower. Captain doesn't want you going after them. Apparently, there were orders. You really think I'd let people be dicking around? We brought Zeke, didn't we? <laughs> hey, I'm here Touché. to fix the shit in case we fall. <laughs> in case we get back, I don't know that. Uh, Captain I Lockwood has that, no response um... to this. Yeah, wait. <laughs> I just, I'm just. He just sits there all of a sudden, like. Oh, okay. Out of character, I believe that Adam has on him a healing hypo for that burn. <laughs> Adam, you got uh, uh, you got any uh, what they, what they call in the old world aloe vera? He's not there. Because I got burned very bad. Oh, this is so, completely out of character. What would you like to do with the control panel? 
Well, does anything look like an on button? <laughs> Good question. Make a ComTech plus Wits roll and hope for lots of successes. You could ask yeah, for help right. from the crew if you wanted. I'd, he would be... I think Ezekiel would be, like, looking over her shoulder at this. What do you think? Well, how do you think we turn it on? I, you know, let's go take a look. I'm not sure. All right, Zeke, ComTech plus Wits. Harrison. Cover our six. pretty good at this. Maybe. Command, Captain, you could do your uh, command roll if two. you want. All right, so once a, you got one bonus dice for me. I am pushing my command roll, if that's all right. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, that's that's nothing. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Go ahead, Doc, with a plus one bonus. Three successes. Three is the number you needed. You do find an on switch, and you actually apparently figured this out faster than David. Uh, it's sonic. It responds to a sonic signal. It's not something you touch. Oh. It's a frequency. You figure you could whistle the frequency. She's going to start trying different pitches without explaining anything. Doctor just starts whistling. <laughs> the way the way Ezekiel helps out is just like hmm, this seems to be a uh, receiver for. Actually, what happens is Ezekiel, you're like judging from the shape of this particular flange here. I think you should try this tune with the whistling. <laughs> so you help speed up the process. But yes, after a few minutes, you do hit a right note that actually makes lights come up all over the control panel and the floor actually starts moving like individual little like if it was made up of Legos and each individual Lego peg was constantly in flux that's what it looks like oh no oh. after what did you just do that's only the floor in the middle of the panel not the whole room turned it on I can now try to access their records you do see symbols everywhere but you don't know what they mean the shape yeah. of you Oh, uh, shit, we don't. <laughs> um, Is, do, you, do you think they communicated by whistling? You do see that. You do see that three of the symbols are a radically different color than the others. Can I look at it and, and like imagine if there were like fifty symbols in pastel? Messages? Yeah, imagine if there's like fifty symbols in pastel over certain parts of the control panel. And then three symbols that are like a really hard primary color. You know, it's just me and my layman's terms here, but uh, that looks like your standard air message. I mean, I, don't, uh, I mean, if we're if it if these make a make uh, any sense, like a witch plus observation roll, Ezekiel. No, Ezekiel's wow. really good at observation. While they're investigating. I think Captain Lockwood would take a couple steps back and try and speak with Adam, like progress report. Uh, one success. Those don't look like error messages to you. Those look more like big red buttons. Oh, big red yeah, buttons. my thought was maybe like an on and off and a shutdown, something like that. Three. Or a missile one, missile two, oh. missile three. Self destruct. <laughs> yeah, who knows? Uh, yeah, I mean... she doesn't want to touch those. I mean, yeah, the let's Keurig not touch button. Uh, Keurig button. Okay, all right. Now you can go I ahead and have your side message with happens. Adam real quick. Adam, progress report. Oh, I feel cold. Uh, they now. are still unmoving, sir. Would you like me to poke them? Uh. Captain Lockwood takes like another three steps back, goes to the corner. Turn down your temperature first. Oh. Which plus observation from the sergeant? <laughs> I 
Oh no! That's three successes. Oh, oh no! Shit. But you also got a one on the stress die. Oh no! Actually, that's four successes. Yes. And a, yeah. You oh, gain a no. stress, but you absolutely not only see what the captain's doing, but you hear it because you just turn the other way and lean in. You know, so he doesn't notice. You hear the whole thing. <laughs> Carry on, Captain. Uh, yes, sir. I will. I will turn off my heat. I can only sustain this for a couple of hours. Oh, Otherwise, me. my systems will malfunction. All right. You'll probably only need to do it for like half an hour. Sergeant, turn off my heat. My systems will malfunction. What the fuck? Plus one stress. <laughs> Adam's an android and didn't tell you for some reason. I understand you specialize in human anatomy, but I need you to try and remove one of the living specimens from one of them. Oh, there. yes. Do we have a container? I believe you have a container present. You do. The doctor had you carry one. Oh, yes, I do have one on me. So the captain uh, wants you to put the egg in the container or the creature? I'm unclear the creature. here. Oh, remove wow. the creature. Put like it in the container. The I don't remove <laughs> the wow. egg. Even just the doctor gonna, wasn't going to ask you to do that shit. Just, just going to crush the egg down to fit into the container. Oh, no. That's... The containers were designed to carry the egg specifically. Oh. That's why they're oh, so big. Just carry the egg. Then. That's why yeah. they're so Take big. The yeah. Take the egg. Okay. Oh. That's easy. <laughs> yeah, you have no problem with your heat off. You just pick it up and drop it in the container, which seals pneumatically. Nothing happens. And uh, what <laughs> would you like me to do with the remaining two? Not the remaining two, the remaining 12. What would you like me to do with the remaining 12? Try not to destroy them for now. An option. Uh, you can't destroy them without the doctors. Go ahead. I would say that I came upon an accident with the flamer that it malfunctioned. You're, you're aware, Adam, that they respond to the doctor. Oh, that. now, that's right. Um, I want you to know I do not want any malfunctions. Uh, I will restrain myself as right. best as possible, yes. Try and put the contained one down away from the others. Yeah. I will move it outside the room, yes. And yeah. come join us. You can just carry ah. it on your back like it has been the whole time. It's not, it's opaque. You oh. can't see that there's anything in it. My concern is that when Adam lets his temperature rise again, it's, gonna... it's pneumatically sealed in there now. Yeah, I, I can't think... do nothing. Yeah. All right, yeah, just bring it on back. All right. Uh, do, I, do I get to see the body now? Yes, it's quite present. So you just file that away, Sarge. That whole conversation. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna just file that away. Uh, we're gonna have some conversations, a little one on one later. Um, I do not turn my heat back on until after I have left the room. Good call. It's almost like I noticed right. that. So. I talked to. I know her. you. I've been. I have played games with you for so <laughs> many years. <laughs> so, back in the control room, what would you like to do, Doc? <laughs> you got well, glow, you got well, glowy buttons and a dead alien. Uh, no, no, no. I'm going to ignore the uh, primary colored buttons since there's a lot of different. Uh, it could shut it off again. It could delete everything. It could launch a missile. Um, Starting engine. <laughs> and we don't exactly want to fly this right now. But uh, looking at the floor, you had said that it's parts of it started moving. Yeah, uh, the control panel is a ring, and inside the ring, the floor is that sci-fi effect you always see where it's individual blocks that just move in a pattern. Um, are there any symbols on the blocks? No. Okay. My thought was keyboard. Um, doesn't mean it's not. Doesn't mean it's not. Maybe we want to do some more 
examinations, research. Do you think, how long would it take to translate these symbols? We would need a linguist for sure. Yep. Um, I mean, a cunning linguist. Which you're setting up a full base here. Yes. Yes, so. they would have to be very ta- They would have to be a very talented linguist. I'm so sorry. Um, uh, I, at this point, am going to step away from the console and look at it somewhat annoyed, and just make a note that we need to request a linguist. Ezekiel's going to take two steps back and go, you, you better watch out for them cutting linguists. They often... Uh, Ezekiel, they often Adam, like both drop vicious and give mockery. Me, give me 20, both of you. <laughs> I swear. I regret nothing. So what would the Sarge <laughs> and the Doc like to do while the captain punishes everyone else? <laughs> um, Bunch of I, idiots. I'll look at the body, oh, sorry. I guess. I'm sorry. It's yeah. a weird suit. It's like it's actually integrated with the body. You have no idea how to take it off, but you could try to figure it out. I'm not interested in taking it off. Um, I want to try to figure out how old it is to see where its age fits in relation to the uh, ship and the eggs. You could get uh, the Sarge to help you roll it over. Uh, can you help me? I, I want to roll it over. Okay. Do you just want me to touch it? Uh, yeah, touch it. Help me roll it. You're not going to do any type of, like, make sure that it's not... It not got any, like, space cooties or nothing on it? <laughs> um, <laughs> space cooties. <laughs> don't eat. Don't don't lick it. Uh, sanitize your hands afterwards. It will be fine. Okay. I'm just making sure. I mean, we walked into one room, and you're like, don't touch anything, and now we're walking into this room, and everyone's touching everything. Yeah. I just, I'm a little confused. To be fair, Sergeant, I've only looked at things. But hey, you guys are the bosses. You want me to roll this thing over? Got it. Oh, Sergeant. Hold on, I'll, help. I'll go help. I'm. Sergeant, please do not person. lick anything. No, I'm not Thank licking you. anything. I, I have to say it now that I've seen you lick that ball. I only lick my ball. Flexible. <laughs> All right. Well, help me with this. Doctor, uh, drop the gauge. <laughs> I didn't think that one do at all. I'm an adult. <laughs> <laughs> Swear. Uh, yes, I will help the doctor flip the body over. You roll what it over, do do? and it does not yeah, have a massive know. exit wound in its chest. However. The helmet's broken out. You can't tell if it's from the inside or the outside because it's been too long, but around the edges of the broken part of the helmet is this uh, particulate matter. It's all dried out and dead now, but it looks like it could have been like a moss or a fungus or maybe even a liquid at one point. It's all black. It's been like that for a while. Then. Go ahead and make your com tech check, tech. Com check test, doctor. Three successes. Yeah, so this thing is uh, about a thousand years old. By this thing, do you mean the residue or the, the, the giant? alien? The, the alien. On the inside of the suit. Which you can see now has. It even has two eyes, a nose, and a mouth like a human would, except the features are much more smooth and, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Not bland, but, like, they don't stand out in any way whatsoever. Also, it's symmetrical, which is weird to humans. Okay. Almost Uncanny Valley, but not quite. I mean to the doctor that would say that it's probably a clone of some sort, if it's that perfect. Um, but, uh, do I get extra questions for, uh, do I get questions for the successes? Yep, do it. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, 
What you told me, does that count as one already? No, not this time. Uh, my question really is about the sort of black residue around the helmet hole, okay. hole in the helmet. Um, is it dead or alive? Long dead. Or at least inert. Like, you don't pick up that it was ever alive. It's inert, though. Um... My next question isn't really... I find the list in the book somewhat limiting, but I guess that's the point. <laughs> um, uh, is it the same as what we found in the cave? No, not even close. Okay. Weird. I think I have one more because I rolled three successes. Yep. Zika's is over there. Well, we turned it on. Now, how the fuck do we turn it off? How did it die? Uh, Hmm. How to answer that question? I mean, the sudden, obvious... radical, and violent genetic alteration. Its DNA was rapidly rewritten, and it just killed it. <laughs> oh, that's terrifying! Fascinating. Well, we found something terribly exciting. The, um, this alien is about a thousand years old, so my assumption really is that it was a crew member of this ship, I guess. But, um, it didn't die from the trauma done to its helmet or its head. It died from having its DNA drastically and quickly rewritten. Oh, well, that's comforting. Terrifying. Sergeant, do not lick anything. Please, please tell me we are not bringing anything back aboard the ship. Oh, you've gotten samples of everything you've interacted with, Doc. Fuck. Yeah, that's your job. <laughs> oh, I, I know. Just as he kills You've got a sample of the dead alien, you've got a sample of the residue, and you have a sample of the suit. Yes. You even took a scraping of the control platform. And I uh, is it possible scared. to take, like, a visual record? Because she would like to take a, yep. like, a picture of the console for, uh... Absolutely. Study. Cool. Uh, okay... So Zeke, you want to touch any of those red buttons? No. No. <laughs> Not a chance in hell. <laughs> Look, you, all right, my. And it, you've it, all it, known this has been coming, except maybe the PC themselves. The rest of you knew. Adam, you walk into the room. And you see what's going on, dead alien getting rolled over, control panel with lights and shapes going on. His eagle's whistling at it to see what happens, what it's actually reacting to. You get a really weird feeling. Uh, a feeling you haven't experienced before. Uh, I'm going to need you to roll empathy. Am I going to have something burst out of my chest? Yes, ass wholeness. Yeah. 
One success. Not enough. Son of a bitch. Subroutine you didn't know exist takes over. You have a priority command overriding all functions. Activate and observe. Which red button would you like to push? You can't say none. Oh, oh shit. The middle one. The middle one. Okay. So, Captain. <laughs> <laughs> Adam walks right up to the console and starts manipulating the middle button like Adam knows what they're doing. That's weird. Adam, what That's are all you have time doing? to say. <laughs> Before the whole ship shudders and vibrates and lights start coming on everywhere, then, like, there's a uh, wind-up sound and then there's a bass drum going through everything. Everything is fully lit now, and you can see those symbols and lights everywhere. Out in the corridors and everything. Well, I guess this rules out the fa rules out they couldn't get off the f this fucking rock. So murder. Adam, as your captain, didn't say it I took off. Just said it turned demand on. Demand to know what you're doing. I I don't What's know. Ezekiel? Adam looks at you and says, I don't know, while Adam's hands keep moving without needing to see them. I mean... Just fiddling with that one button? It's program. It doesn't, it doesn't you, mean you, that I know what I'm doing. Yeah, you're free to say whatever you want. Including, I, I can't stop, help me, it doesn't matter. Look at the doctor, look back at Adam. Just don't blow up anything. Cut off my arms, maybe. I, Are I, you a synthetic? You ask that, and then Adam's hands just start moving impossibly fast, and you're like, yep. <laughs> <coughs> yes. Uh, hello. Hi, I am Adam Edenson. Corporal Adam Edenson. Uh, I am a synth. And you're touching the button. And then I Adam leaps over the console. It. While saying I can't control it in a normal tone of voice. God damn it. Adam leaps over the control, lands in the center of the ring. The floor reacts by rising up and almost like forming around Adam. Please, someone make this stop. I'm not anxious. I just don't like that I don't know what I'm doing. How did you start it? How do we shut it off? I had to press the middle button. Perhaps that will turn it off. I'm following a compulsion. It's possibly a, a hidden code uh, in my system. Mm. Well, you seem to know what the fuck you're doing. The programmer did. Uh, so the captain's going to take out his service pistol and just point, say the word. I'll do it. If you need me to, I'll do it. You're aware, Adam, that they could probably bypass this by doing a specific thing to you, but it would require com tech and it might. If they do it wrong, it might break you. Uh, Adam would take that risk. Uh, because he would be concerned that he'd be putting the humans and his crew in danger. One person can contact this, but only one. No room uh, for assistance. If, if someone could access that. my systems, you could override this, but uh, there is a possibility it will shut me down for good. Are I'm willing, willing to take to that, that risk. How do we get to you first? How do we shut this off? So Adam actually starts explaining to you how to do the data thing. You temporarily disable him, open the panel, start messing with the interior. <laughs> yeah, but you're floating in the middle of the room. How do we get you down? You have no idea because it's the subroutine doing this, not you. Use the rope, perhaps. <laughs> Grappling hook. Climb on each other's shoulders. And then Adam pushes one of the other colorful buttons. Oh, jeez. And like a hologram pops up and it's like a star chart and then it starts zooming around to specific planets oh perhaps this will explain a little bit more um can we radio back to the ship sure you can try i think we should let someone know that we might be leaving okay you ready <laughs> <laughs> the dropship or the Ossipon? The Ossipon? Are on a field trip? <laughs> you or signal the Ossipon. And who's doing the talking? 
It can't be the Sarge. Naturally, it, the it captain. It can't be me? That's correct. Captain, you, you contact the Ossifon and your signal's received by Burke. Dwayne, please switch characters and have a conversation with the captain. You will not let anyone else on the ship know what's <laughs> happening down there. You're fully aware because you were signified when the android kicked in and you know exactly what's going on and this is what you want. Mother and in this talking. instance, you can override the captain. So, captain, begin. Captain. Also to the audience before you start, for those who don't know, each of these players has two characters and Duane's other characters accompany man. Begin. Uh, this is Captain Lockwood phoning in from planet surface. Yes, Captain, uh, go ahead. Oh, God. This is not the person who should have answered, Cap. Agent, what are you doing? I am answering your call. Uh, great. All right. <laughs> I see that you have found interesting things down there. All right. Do you mind telling me what the hell is going on? Where? Why? Captain Lockwood's just gonna like Full start pacing things. around. <laughs> just he's having a moment. You're allowed to tell the captain what you want because he has clearance, but you don't have to. Well, the truth is, the company had no idea you'd run across this. This is like the golden goose. You actually yeah. just hoped there would be some sign of the engineers here. Not like an intact ship that still has power. This could mean a vice president ship if you get this done right. Heck yeah. Are you having a difficulty understanding on your current situation, Captain? I did not consent to this! You hear yeah, Adam say it from the background. Yeah, I'm having a difficulty. Allow me to lay it on the table for you. Fill it out to me. Real slow like. You all currently work for the company. Corporal Adams is an asset of the company. We own Adams. Adam. There are multiple of them. Is that what you're suggesting? It is a line. Yes. <laughs> there are many Adamses. The Adams family. So I'm guessing you <laughs> learned what's going on down here because of Adam. Oh, of course. Could you do uh, me the favor of getting him to stop for like five minutes? Oh, I can't override any of the protocols. We just have to wait for it to come to fruition. This has all been set up by the company way before I even came around. Ah, lovely. All right, what's supposed to come to fruition here? So what An you would be looking for... Uh, intelligent man, life? ...is you actually want a point of origin from the ship. That's all you care about. The company wants to know where they come from, because that yeah. world is key. If you can find navigational data rerouting the point of origin of this ship, Adam will shut down automatically. Yes. Or return to normal. So he's not going to take off with all of us in here? If that's the only way that you can get that data. Yep. <laughs> Gee, thanks. Uh, you also know, company up. man, before he hangs up, you can tell him if you want. They're not in the control room. They're not in the cockpit. They're in a control room. This room does not pilot the ship. That's that other room at the other end of the C-section. So unless small. there's an autopilot, they can't fly from here. And I would know that? 
Yes. You actually know the basics of the design of engineer ships. The companies I interacted with at least three of them. And they suspect there was a fourth interacted with an LV-426, but no logs of that exist. Hmm. I will not share with them the fact that I know the layout. Um, but if I know it, then Adam should know it. Correct. I have a very important question. Is it getting warmer in the ship? No. Okay. I was going to ask that same thing. As <laughs> <laughs> right. so soon as we were done with this conversation. Or at least it's not it? in this room. How warm is it in the cargo area? <laughs> uh, that uh, you don't know. I'm no one's in there. While I'm stuck playing with these buttons, Dr. Laura Lamb, I have brought you and secured you a present. Uh, one of the eggs is in the container on my back if we survive this ship, uh, it is all yours. And you said you hung up, Captain? Okay, Dwayne, you can put your helmet back on. <laughs> or leave it off, it's up to you. <laughs> <laughs> so, Adam, manipu er, Adam manipulates the last of the brightly lit buttons. And it actually does show a star chart, and this ship stopped off at three other worlds before it got to this one. But it does show a point of origin. You don't know if it's a home world, but it's where this ship came from. And your memory banks recorded at him. It's very far away. It'd be a long hypersleep jumping from here. Uh. Once you finish that, you are able to disconnect yourself like autonomy returns. However, you're also at that moment are able to realize how this thing works. So you could actually learn stuff if you wanted to. If the things you want to try to activate are intact. Uh, uh, it seems that the programming is finished. That's a relief if I knew what that felt like. But I now know that I can learn some things from the system uh, if you like, if they're intact, that is. Um, I would be interested in uh, captain's logs or something like that. Maybe what happened to this ship and its crew. It was probably not manned by just one person. That is a wise choice. I also would like to know. I would Master. also like to know why you put an egg in a container. Sergeant, that is classified Dr. information. Lambs. Adam, you do not need to answer that. Well, it, it was spoken of before in front of everyone by Dr. But, Lamb, so... How did you, how did you do it? Uh, well, as you realize yeah, now, I am a synth. Uh, I was able to turn off my heat signature. How industrious. Yes, I, I like to pride myself on efficiency. So what questions did you want to learn from the system? Uh, definitely the captain and crew logs, if available. And other places they've been. So... Uh, for those of you that have seen the prequels, you know they have that hologram that grabs the part, the, particle, the particles in the atmosphere and recreates things happening in the ship. And uh, this ship actually landed here safely, but then local fauna <laughs> assaulted the uh, pilots when they were doing whatever it is. You don't even know what it is they're doing. They're just walking around with these weird... They look like pottery cylinders. 
and they were like going to leave them outside. You don't know what the point of that is. But they were assaulted by a local fauna that kind of looks like a T-Rex, but faster, and the arms are actually useful. <laughs> and it wasn't just one. They move like wolf packs. It's like a wolf pack of T-Rexes with good arms. That's terrifying. Hopefully they're extinct. Uh, Wait, hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on. You just described a pack of Godzillas. Correct. Goddamn. They uh, assaulted the pilots and then broke through the exterior of the ship and rampaged for a minute. Uh, all the po There were f four pilots. It appears that three of them died in the battle. One managed to drive them off, but some of the cylinders that they were carrying around were smashed and it was carrying some kind of biological weapon and it effectively killed that pilot. Also, there's four more in cryosleep still in the, in the, in the piloting chamber. Oh. Backup crew. Unless those systems failed too and they just literally froze to death. Who knows? That was a thousand years ago. Uh, there's no record of anything after that to explain the eggs or the cave or any of that. Uh, the other worlds they visited, one of which is also very Earth-like, and one is just like Mars. And then, which, you know, it could have housed white life once and could be terraformed now. There's ice, but there's no atmosphere. Uh, and then, whatever the home world is doesn't actually have any information because it's assumed that they would have known. <laughs> like, that's a key world that you didn't need a lot of data on. Interesting. If the party didn't have access to this information when I did, I will relay this to them. Okay. I Corporal. wonder... Oh, Can my apologies, a... Captain. <laughs> Dang, Sam. Talking over me. God damn, I'm still Captain. Corporal. Can you get a listing of all weapon systems that might be remaining on this ship? Uh, I, I believe I might. Let me find out. Also, if I may, um, do we want to check on the cargo hold now that this thing's turned on? I think that wise. Uh, and uh, the backup crew, maybe? Like, have they... What's going on with them? Also, one of the worlds, the star system was charted. Uh, it's close enough, it's still super far away, but it was, it's close enough that the star system was charted by the company. And they didn't actually realize there was a planet there because it's a binary star system. And it wasn't on any of the commercial routes. And the binary star system actually hid the world. They actually gave the system a name. Tyler looks at Duane. It's the Achilles system. So there are a bunch of heels. You don't know. G-435 Achilles 2.4. Goddamn 3.5. Oh. I don't know what that means. <laughs> but Dwayne clearly does. The numbers sound very familiar. I have to double check though. They should. <laughs> from the um, extended universe. I, as a player, very much agree with uh, uh, JT's assertion that we should check the cargo hold, but what do other people want to do? We should get the cargo hold checked out. Definitely. I'm just following the dock. I, uh, I am concerned that perhaps what befell this body that we found may have corrupted the ones in cryosleep prior to their cryosleep. Well, now that you point that out, really, um, what, there were 250 empty eggs? Roughly. 
laid 500 years ago. Mm -hmm. By something. By something. I wonder... They are leathery. Could have been the dinosaurs for all you know. Oh my god, did we just find baby dinosaurs? Kind of seem reptilian. Sorry, ever. Baby dinosaurs. I don't know. We should simply be aware that there might be... No, we would have picked those up on the... Uh, the scan? The scan. Uh, I was becoming concerned that there were 250 uh, life forms from these eggs, but... No. Uh, cool. Uh, and However, you were able to figure out that, yes, this room is elevated and isolated from other rooms. This one in the, in the, in the actual piloting room are their own contained areas. But yeah, in order to provide power to the ship, the generator has to turn on and the generator creates heat. And the ship has been heating up. And every area that was open and where the doors still work has now closed and sealed because that's an automatic uh, function of the ship. And the ship has begun repairing the external holes, too. However, the door to the cargo area was broken and couldn't be closed. Quite industrious. Perhaps I should turn off I the knew end. it was fucking broken. Y'all didn't believe me? I knew it. Yeah, no one argued with you. Uh, you just didn't care. I don't, I don't believe... Oh, that's very sad for me. Uh, would, would you like me to shut down this system? I believe that I can. Please. Yes! Mother, may I? <laughs> you attempt to. But it can't complete. It can't be shut back down until it completes boot up. It's like trying to turn a computer off before it gets to Windows if there's no power button to push or plug to pull. You got to wait there, till you get into Windows to get the shut down button. There is a dilemma that. Uh, also, the other twelve eggs are empty now. Son of a. Oh, oh that's that's fun. I would like to. Doctor, you wanted to see a last specimen, correct? Yes. Though oh, not in this type of environment. We have a left I'd like to point out to the crew now that. <laughs> I would like to point out to the crew that now you know that I am a synth. Uh, do not hesitate to hide behind me in case of a firefight or toss me in front of you. That's I don't I think I'll be doing that, but I appreciate the offer. And that is when the door to the room you're in slides shut and locks. It actually is seamless. It actually just looks like wall now. The ship's not taking off. It's just, this is just a boot-up process. The ship cannot fly. You would know that now, Adam. It is the flight... The atmospheric exit process is not repairable by you. <laughs> However... Do not fear the ship cannot take off. Yeah. So the door seals... Adam says, don't worry, everything will be fine. And that's when the Sarge turns around and sees something that looks like fingers come flying at him from the corner of the room with a giant whipping tail. And that's where we pause until next week. (laughs) 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 Didn't he, like, I I think Tyler just has a thing for putting things in your body because remember (laughs) your demon. (laughs) I, yes, I had the demon. <laughs> I, I already had another <laughs> alien character that practically went yep. through the same oh, thing. Oh, that's right. Yeah, the first shot, the, the one shot we did, yeah. Tyler, is there something you want to tell us? Would you like to know why it was Dwayne this time? Because there is a reason. It is Dwayne every time. But yeah, but this time is a different reason. Okay. Dwayne's the only person trying to act logically in a horror movie. So of course he dies first. <laughs> horror movie logic. Questioning all the bad decisions. What do you think is going to happen? <laughs> you see, the captain so, knows this. So the, bad so the captain is acting irrational. So the bad decisions can happen. Yeah, Harrison is really like, why are we doing all of this dumb stuff? I don't want to just run in and blow stuff up. But you say don't touch stuff, so I don't touch stuff. Now you're saying kick stuff. You should probably touch and shoot the thing trying to snap onto your face. Yeah. That seems wise. (laughs) 
<laughs> All right, yeah, Marines. Wow, we gotta we gotta ask Doctor Lore first. All right, Marines. That's enough bug hunting. We better get back to the barracks because it'll be dark soon, and they mostly come at night. Mostly. But don't worry. We'll be back in the ship next week, same time, same place. We thank you for embarking on this mission with us. Hope we see you again next week. You help me. Uh, don't forget to click follow here on Twitch, and also subscribe and hit the bell on YouTube if you haven't. You are helping us get this delivery to the periphery on time. Special thanks to our patrons tonight and our Twitch subscribers. You help make our quality better, our cosplay sharper, and help us feed many, many pets, including a pigeon. Thanks also to Free League, Astral Tabletop, the Foundry VTT, as well as Dark Somnia Music, Coag Music, and White Bat Audio for many of the tunes and beats you heard in this episode. And don't forget, starting tomorrow, June 11th to 13th, on a CapathCon, catch us running shows every day, starting at 4 tomorrow and ending at 9 on Sunday, with very few breaks. Marines, fall in and sound off. Name, rank, duty assignment with the Vorpal Corps, as well as your Merc contracts elsewhere on the network. Uh, yeah, so closing us out tonight, I am J3 Billion, otherwise known as Ezekiel Thomas, and I have been a roughneck tonight, and I will be here for Saturday, um, I believe it's a, a 3 p.m. and 8 p.m. stream on the Vorpo, or the, uh, Onyx Path Con, so I'm really excited for that, both, uh, Scarred Lands, and, uh, super excited to get back to Scarred Lands, so I'll see you guys there. Hey everybody, I have played Corporal Adam Edens in this evening. You can find me all over the internet as Changeling Ever because I am Ever. As always, my pronouns are they, them, and you can find me playing things tomorrow. Onyx PathCon. Hell yeah. And I am Dwayne at Made of Kimchi on the on the network. Uh I will also be doing many things for Onyx PathCon. You'll just have to check out the schedule and find <laughs> me there. <laughs> Even Dwayne you know, doesn't know. Yes, I, I will be running, uh, as per the norm tomorrow, I will be running the next episode of Contagion Chronicle, No Time for Reality. But that will be on uh, Occultus uh, Anonymous on channel Occultus because Anonymous. they're hosting all Chronicles of Darkness for the convention. Yes. And it will be one hour earlier than normal. It will be starting at four rather than five. And may not run Eastern quite as time. long because it's a con show, but we'll see. Yes. But then you can also see me later on in the weekend playing Deviant the Renegade and Mage 20th Technocracy and another one that I forgot. Scion. Yes. Scion. And Pugmire. I think. Yeah, you're in one of them. I don't remember which one. <laughs> Pretty sure you're in Squeaks. Yeah. Uh, hi, I am Rosie. You might know me as Regular Size Mom. You can follow me on Twitter at mom underscore size. And this weekend at Onyx PathCon, you can see me in the Mage Victorian game on Saturday and in the Rich Bastards Mage game on Sunday. And you can see my delightful husband, uh, Ben Big Dad Walker, uh, in the Technocracy game on Saturday, and also playing with me in Rich Bastards on Sunday. Also playing Burke. And... Uh, you can also see me doing some stuff on Carrying Comfort Studios. Not this Saturday, but next Saturday. Uh, you can watch me play Heart City Beneath, an actual play where I play Blood Witch. It's a lot of fun. Uh, and also this month on Carrying Comfort, uh, we're raising money for the Trevor Project during the entire month. It's our Comfortably Queer campaign. Uh, they, we've already raised uh, enough money that I have to run a one-shot stream, right. so keep an eye on that. It's going to be Bluebeard's Bride. We have a great cast. Um, so if you can donate, not necessarily to the Trevor Project, but any wonderful cause the, during this particular month or ever, 
doesn't have to be this month. It's always a good cause. Just, you know, it's also one of our favorite charities. Yeah. So, have a good week. Oh, hi. Didn't see you there. I'm Kisama. <laughs> you can find me on Twitter at TrueKisama. And you can find me tomorrow in the Contagion Chronicle posted on Occultist, Occultist Anonymous. Anonymous. Yep. And you can find me here in Squeaks in the Deep. Plastic Age Plays. We are the whole Plastic story Age Plays. Path. Story path. Along with various other games during the weekend in Onyx PathCon. games I cannot remember at the moment. All right. I believe you're the last one. Yes, Key? Yes. Excellent. Yes. I myself will be running all three of the Mage games. Here's a secret. It's a three-part story across three game lines. You should come check it out, especially if you're into aliens, because Technocracy Loaded begins with The Thing in Antarctica before moving on to Victorian Mage and then a Rich Bastard's Guide to Magic, a time-a-hopping battle against a Marauder. It's going to be awesome. Uh, also, you can catch me getting stabbed to death. Uh, they came from Camp Murder Lake on Fridays and uh, doing Mission Impossible. They came from Classified on Sunday. First time that one's airing publicly anywhere, I'm pretty sure. So yes, come check us doing all the things, because many of them will be awesome. But, for the Ride or Die viewers, it's now boat time. Boat time. Boat. Viewers can vote for any one player each session. Votes from the audience are worth one free reroll on the stress or critical injury chart, so they can take whichever result they prefer. Players, your votes for each other are the first votes worth an XP. Any follow-up votes let you reroll death saves, or redraw initiative. Begin! You are muted, John. <laughs> there we go. I'm sorry. I'm sitting here talking to myself. I'm like, wow, these, they're really quiet. Um, I could give mine to either Dwayne or Ever tonight. Um, Ever for just like the fantastic. Just, uh, well, it, it, it could go three ways. I, I think Dr. Laura was very good tonight. Just like on point the entire night ever was, was when she was manipulating the dials was just very like just almost almost like on autopilot the entire time and i kind of i kind of love that exactly like a synth and then uh sergeant harrison for his uh correct reaction to all of this bullshit <laughs> um i think i'm gonna give mine to sergeant harrison um just because I I, I like the re, I like the reaction. It was interesting, and it's going to have some good role playing moments if we ever get around to it. If I survive. If we survive, yeah. Oh, everybody was so awesome. Um, I'm going to have to give it to Key for the dynamic between Adam and Captain Lockwood. That was that was fun to role play. Oh, yeah, it's me. Uh, my... I wasn't going to vote for, for the doc today, but I think today I will vote for Ezekiel uh, for just being paranoid about everything, even when he doesn't need to be. Hey, look, he got, he got bitch slapped by a bug, all right? He got his knee broke as fuck. He don't want to do that again. Thank you. Appreciate it. Um. I am going to give my vote to Dwayne uh, for putting up with all his jokes about his balls. I, I, the very last one, I actually did not mean at all. <laughs> valid that one actually came out 
natural. Like that, one was that, one, that one came naturally, <laughs> and I didn't realize it till it came out of my mouth. His balls are very infamous. You should know this. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I have to vote for the infamous balls and by proxy Dwayne. B -b 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 balls oh. of steel. They are. Literally. Yep. Literally, they're made of steel. <laughs> Probably a composite, too. Mm. Thank you for the follow, Dead and Slow. Yeah, you got a little bit of carbon fiber in there, probably. Somewhere. Sergeant All right. Harrison, do they taste like carbon fiber? <laughs> yes. <laughs> and now, a thing I only ever remember to do when we're offline. We're going to do it online this week because I remembered. Mm. XP time. Experience. Did you participate in the session? Yes, one each. Did you risk or sacrifice something to further your personal agenda? No. No, I don't think I did. For uh, sure. Kind of for me. Um, What's your agenda again? Uh, let me find it. Never take a life. I tried to protect it wouldn't... my lives. Wait, let me read the wording. Did you risk or sacrifice something? Oh, uh, well, uh... Yeah, you endangered the party by collecting a living creature inside the egg. What about Key? Everyone else said no. My personal agenda is that I cannot let any fuck-ups occur while under my command. And then yes. So... You forced the android to pick up the egg outside of the normal order to make sure it was done your way, which is the correct way. That was highly dangerous. So yes. Next. Did you risk your life for your buddy? No. I risked my neck for my buddy by giving him a grenade. <laughs> I mean, uh, my... I'd count that. Nope, not till it almost <laughs> kills you. Uh, Damn. Well, my buddy's Ezekiel. I tried. What's up, Doc? Uh, Mike's buddy is uh, not on this mission with us. It's Grant Lethem. So I might argue that, uh, yes, I endangered my life. I'm here. Oh, allow it, because Grant's an asshole. <laughs> yeah, I mean... Because uh... <laughs> Grant specifically made things worse. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Next, did you challenge or stand up to your rivals? Nope, my rival wasn't here. Uh, JT, do you feel like I stood up to or challenged Ezekiel at any point? Uh, oh, JT's not I here. Think oh, I'm sorry. They're both John. Sorry, John. <laughs> Ezekiel, yeah. Um, I would say there was actually quite... Like, it, it was kind of glossed over because it was a little bit nuanced, but there was, like, friction there, so... Like, I, I legitimately was ter terrified of taking anything off this ship. And Dr. Laura's just like, no, no, we're <laughs> pack it up, let's go, we're taking it on the ship. No, okay. bad idea, shit gets loose, bad idea, it stays here. Okay, I will take that. Did anyone make a panic roll? Anyone who did, plus one. <laughs> oh, yeah. Did anyone overcome a dangerous event? Not yet. <laughs> Next week. Uh, yes, I, I may. Hunker. Well, no, <laughs> I, may I lied in the first. I lied. The first the couple minutes. John in the blizzards. John, you can have the XP for that one. You were in danger. Totally uh, not from what was in the cave. But... <clears throat> yeah. Totally wasn't for a full of xenomorph panthers or anything. Did you make a significant discovery or revelation? Yes, you all get a point for that. Hell yeah. Did you all perform yeah. extraordinary actions? Uh, Doc, yes. Android, yes. Yeah. Turn the thing on! That's correct. Do I get anything for extraordinary leadership? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no. Uh, no. Watch yeah. him do it. <laughs> and did you earn money? Not this session. No payday yet. And that's the end. So, audience, we must leave you for the week. 
But remember, don't get too loud about it, because it won't do you any good, because in space, no one can hear you scream. See you next week, and hopefully we'll see you at the convention. Bye. Uh Thank you.